One of the most meaningful things astronomy teaches us is that we can always try to understand a bit more about the world around us. Think, for example, of a constellation. We can spot it in the night sky, and we can spend some time admiring it with people we love. It is surely romantic stuff. But if you see the world through the eyes of an astronomer, everything acquires a new, deeper meaning. Astronomers know that a constellation is always more than just stars connected to one another by means of imaginary lines. They know that some exotic objects might be hiding within the constellation, some objects that we are not able to see by the naked eye. Maybe one of the stars that make up the constellation is actually a multi-star system, only we can't see it because of the huge distance between us and them. Or maybe some constellations host a galaxy. Today, we're going to talk about the Andromeda constellation, which actually has both a multi-star system and a galaxy hiding within it. Let's find out more. The Fascinating Andromeda Constellation Facts, Myths and Location The Andromeda constellation is made up of 16 stars and it is visible in the northern sky. In fact, the constellations that you can see in the sky depend on where you are located. In short, different latitudes mean different skies. The constellation of Andromeda is called after the Andromeda princess. She was a mythological character in ancient Greek culture. Of course, as you've probably already heard, the Andromeda constellation hosts the Andromeda galaxy, the nearest full-fledged galaxy to our own Milky Way. The Andromeda galaxy and the Milky Way are actually the two most prominent galaxies in the so-called local group. The local group is a galaxy group with a total diameter of roughly 3 megaparsecs which correspond to 10 million light years and a huge total mass of the order of thousands of billions of solar masses. The local group has a dumbbell shape, the lobes of which are given from the Milky Way and its satellites on one hand and the Andromeda galaxy and its satellites on the other. Perhaps the most interesting and amazing thing about these two lobes is that they are moving toward one another with a velocity of 123 kilometers per second. This means that sooner or later they will collide. In particular, the collision between the Andromeda galaxy and the Milky Way has already started. The exact number of galaxies in the local group is unknown as some are occluded by the Milky Way. However, at least 80 members are known, most of which are dwarf galaxies. Going back to our constellation, why is it so important? First of all, Andromeda was one of the first constellations ever described. In fact, the ancient Greek astronomer Claudius Ptolemy, in his work The Almagest, described 48 constellations and one of them was Andromeda. The Almagest can be seen as a mathematical and astronomical treatise. It talks about stats, planetary paths and assumes a geocentric model. It is therefore one of the most influential scientific texts in history, but also a key source of information about ancient Greek astronomy. However, such constellations had already been known by the Greeks, Babylonians and Egyptians. Ptolemy's work was important though, because it made the first official description of constellations. Andromeda is one of the largest constellations described in the Almagest, and starting from the 48 constellations of Ptolemy, another 40 were added over the centuries. Many of these additions reside in the southern sky, which was not visible to Ptolemy, who spent most of his life in Egypt. Now I want to ask you, how many times did you happen to look at the stars and try to connect dots between them to recognize a pattern, a figure, but failed? Well, this will never happen, because now I'm going to explain to you how to admire Andromeda. First of all, for the best vision, you need to be in the northern hemisphere. This is because, changing latitude and going towards the south, Andromeda moves closer toward the horizon. In short, the further south you stand, the lower it is. And if you live at about 40 degrees south latitude, I have bad news for you. At those latitudes, Andromeda disappears completely. So be sure to check your position on Earth before starting to look for Andromeda. Well, once you set the place and you're sure you can see the right stars, you need to understand when. And this all depends on the period of time during the year. First of all, you should look for it during the night, because during the day, you won't be able to spot it. Did you like this joke? Being serious now, there are some months in which you will have very good observations. As a rule of thumb, if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, Andromeda is best observed from August to February. Instead, if you live in the Southern Hemisphere, the best period is from October to December. 
From August to September, in the Northern Hemisphere, Andromeda emerges from the northeastern horizon at about 10 p.m. local time, then gradually rises overhead. From October to November, it emerges in the eastern sky at around 8 p.m. From December to January, Andromeda rises at around 6 p.m. and moves along the northwestern horizon. Andromeda is not hard to find. It is actually pretty easy, considering that you can find it starting from one of the most beautiful and well-known constellations of the Northern Hemisphere. We're talking about Cassiopeia. It is a W-shaped constellation, which makes it quite recognizable, and it is named after the vain queen Cassiopeia, mother of Andromeda, and King Cepheus's wife, according to Greek mythology. When her mother bragged that Andromeda was better looking than the famously beautiful Nereid's sea nymphs, the sea god Poseidon sent his pet monster called Cetus to destroy Cepheus's kingdom, and the gods said that sacrificing Andromeda would save the country and its people. So the loving parents had their daughter chained to a rock by the sea, so that the sea monster could get her easily. Fortunately, the charming prince Perseus flew past on his winged horse Pegasus and fell in love with Andromeda's beauty. The two of them got married and lived happily ever after. The Cassiopeia constellation points directly at Andromeda. You can easily see it, you just need a bit of imagination. You can see the constellation as a sprawled figure with its arms extended. The figure's feet point in the direction of Percy's constellation, right next to Cassiopeia. The figure's head, instead, connects the constellation to the neighboring square of Pegasus. Well, now you know everything on how to spot Andromeda in the night sky, depending on the time of the year you're looking for it and the location on Earth. What about the main features of this constellation? What can we say about its stars? Are they boring, usual stars, or do they have some special characteristics? Well, we can start by saying that three of Andromeda's stars are brighter than magnitude 3, which puts them in the top 100 brightest stars in the sky. This alone could already prove their uniqueness, but there's actually a lot more to say. Let's start with the brightest star. It is Alpha Rats, also called Alpha Andromedae. Alpha Rats is essentially Andromeda's head, but it is also part of the neighboring square of Pegasus. This star is located 97 light years from Earth, and is a so-called binary star because it consists in a system of two stars orbiting a common center of mass. The two components have different masses and the bigger one has a unique chemical composition in terms of mercury and manganese. It is in fact the star with the highest levels of these two elements. The smallest star is about 10 times as luminous as the sun and orbits the larger star every 97 days. The second brightest star is Mirac, also known as Beta Andromedae. As it usually happens, stars belonging to the same constellation are at different distances from the Sun. So it won't be strange for you to know that Beta Andromedae is twice the distance than Alpha Andromedae. Its distance from us is about 200 light years. It is a giant star 1,900 times as bright as the Sun and 3 to 4 times as massive. Within the Andromeda constellation, Mirac forms the chained figure's left hip. The third star, Almac, or Gamma Andromedae, is Andromeda's foot. It is a multi-star system featuring a central giant orbited by a pair of white dwarfs. The star's central giant is 2,000 times more luminous than the Sun. Hey, if you're watching this video, it means you're passionately curious about human spaceflight and the mysteries of the universe. We constantly strive to make videos that excite a curious person like you, so be sure to subscribe now and press the bell notification. Anyway, in addition to the visible stars, one can find many intriguing objects within the Andromeda constellation that are only visible with a telescope or binoculars. For example, as we said, somewhere in the Andromeda constellation is hidden the Andromeda galaxy, the closest full-fledged galaxy to the Milky Way. The galaxy is located some 2.5 million light years away from Earth and is barely visible to the naked eye but can be found with binoculars. If you have binoculars and you want to find it, you can do it by looking for a misty patch on the edge of the Andromeda constellation to the right of the sprawled figure's right hip, which is right next to Mirac. And once again, the W-shaped Cassiopeia constellation helps us because it points vaguely in the direction of the galaxy. The great thing about the Andromeda galaxy is that it is currently racing toward our Milky Way at a speed of about 113 kilometers per second. Given its distance from the Milky Way, our merger will occur 5 billion years from now. So you don't have to worry about it, because unfortunately, you will be long dead at the time that the collision occurs. However, don't lose hope, because in a certain sense, the collision has already started. 
In August 2020, the peer-reviewed astrophysical journal published new research revealing that the collision between our galaxies is already underway. The news about the Andromeda Galaxy came from Project Amiga, which uses the Hubble Space Telescope to look at the deep space surroundings of the Andromeda Galaxy. Amiga stands for Absorption Map of Ionized Gas in Andromeda. NASA called it the most comprehensive study of a halo surrounding a galaxy. The Andromeda Galaxy, our Milky Way, and other galaxies all sit enshrouded in a large envelope called a galactic halo, which consists of gas, dust, and stray stars. The halos of galaxies are faint, so faint in fact that detecting them is not an easy feat. These astronomers measured the size of the halo of the Andromeda Galaxy by looking at how much it absorbed light from background quasars. They were surprised to find that Andromeda's galaxy halo stretches much, much further beyond its visible boundaries. Indeed, it extends as far as half the distance to our Milky Way, 1.3 million light years, and even farther in other directions. The thing is, we cannot be sure that the two galaxies' halos are touching yet. This is mostly because we cannot easily measure the characteristics of our own galaxy's halo. It is much easier to study Andromeda's halo because our vantage point inside the Milky Way is not the best place for understanding how our galaxy is made. Think about it. You observe an external galaxy and you clearly see its shape. But how do you find the Milky Way shape if you're orbiting inside of it? It needs a lot more study and understanding. However, because the two galaxies are so similar in size and appearance, scientists assume that the halo of the Milky Way would also be similar. Are you curious to know how the Andromeda and Milky Way merger would look? NASA released these images in 2012. They are artistic concepts of what someone on Earth might see as the Andromeda galaxy hurtles towards us. Going from the first row left panel to the fourth row on the right, we see the evolution of the collision from present day to 7 billion years. As you can see, in 7 billion years, the merged galaxies form a huge elliptical galaxy with its bright core dominating the nighttime sky. This video ends here. Thanks for watching. What do you think about Andromeda? Did you know about the existence of Alpharaz or Mirac? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you next time on the channel.